Okay, folks, so um, this next and final exercise is a practice exercise for your in-class assignment or your, your uh, ICA that um, will be posted this week. Um, and I definitely recommend you completing the first two exercises first. And this one is meant more as a practice. Uh, and it will definitely help you um, when uh, uh, creating your, um, your ICA, working on your ICA. All right. Um, so this is our final version of it, and we're going to build it from scratch. But let's take a look at what it looks like. I'm not hearing sound, so I'm going to just load it up into Chrome. Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> okay, not working in Chrome. But uh, when we test it out in Animate, and it opens up here in Safari, there should be sound. There should be some honking and uh, the airplane, an airplane sound. Okay, so um, make sure you check that out. I've given you a link in the PDF. In fact, let's we'll go to this link in Chrome. I bet that will work for us. Where is the sound? There it is. Okay. We're all going to get very tired of that uh, soon. Um, okay. So we've got an airplane that was looping around. Um... And then we have this bus appearing and going across the bridge. All of this is going to be done with motion paths. And then we're going to add some sound. Okay, so let's build this by, uh, from scratch here. We'll go File, New. And we'll choose... Um, any of these presets will do. Uh, it doesn't really matter. From within here, we want to make sure the frame rate is 24 frames per second. And let's... Um, uh, we don't have to worry about the size quite yet. And make sure we're an HTML5 canvas. Okay, hit create. Okay, so let's import. Uh, well, first off, let's save. We'll call this um, N NY New York Airplane. And I'm going to save it within my practice folder here. All right. And let's import uh, the graphics. We need the airplane, the bus, and the bridge, and the background. So I'm going to go File, Import, Import to library. And let's navigate to our required file folder. And there's four graphics there, four pings within the pics folder. Biplane, bus, New York Bridge, New York City. Let's bring all those into our library. Okay, so let's rename layer one. We'll rename it background. And I'm going to drag an instance of New York City to the stage. Now we want our stage to match the size of our uh, background. So let's choose modify document and click on match contents. And hit OK. Now our stage matches our background size.
Okay, so we want our animation to be 140 frames long. So I'm going to go to frame 140 and insert a frame. So right click on frame 140 and choose insert frame. Okay, perfect. Okay, so next we want to bring in our bridge. We have a separate bridge graphic. So let's lock the background layer that we just created and create a new layer called bridge. And drag an instance of NYC bridge to the stage. Now you're going to have to just visually line it up. There we go. Make sure it lines up with the other graphic. Why do we have this separate? Well, we want the illusion of an airplane flying under the bridge and behind it and then over it. So we're actually going to put the airplane layer between the bridge and the background layer. So let's lock the bridge layer, select the background layer, and then hit the new add new layer button. And that places a new layer above the background layer, which is below the bridge layer. And we'll call it airplane. Now, if that isn't the case, if your airplane layer is above your bridge layer, just click and drag the layer name. So the airplane layer name, click and drag it, and you can place it between bridge and background. All right. So we're going to create a path for our airplane. So let's, um, let's do that first. Let's create the path for the airplane first. And now we're going to follow the same steps that we did for the exercise we did this week, where we created a fish going around in a circle. So we're, we created, we drew the path first, and then we cut it out of the stage and then placed it, pasted it on a motion tween. So let's draw the path first. Um, I'm going to just turn the visibility off of the background layer so I can see things a little bit better. So making sure you're on the airplane layer, I'm going to turn on my pen tool. And I want the airplane starting off stage, flying to the right. So starting off stage left, flying to the right, going up, upper right, and then back to the left off stage. So we're actually going to draw a path that's relatively that shape. Now here's my advice when using the pen tool and creating, and we want to create a very smooth path. And this is something you need to know for this week's ICA. To create a really smooth looking path, the less um, edit points that you um, drop for the path, uh, the better, the smoother it's going to be. And OK, so I'll demonstrate that. So I'm going to start bottom left off screen. I'm going to click once with my pen tool. And I know my next point of the airplane uh, flying needing to turn up is over here. Then it's going to start turning to the left up here. Then I'm going to have it end off screen over here. Now, this doesn't look very smooth right now, but we are going to smooth these corners out. Now, if you switch to your sub selection tool and select one of your corner points here, that we want to turn these into curves, really smooth curves. So for that, we need to use Bezier handles. So I'm going to select the point that I want to edit first with my sub selection tool. And just notice that when you select 
one of these um, edit points or anchor points. Uh, I've been calling them edit points. They are called anchor points. When you select an anchor point on a path with the subselection tool, all the other anchor points are white and the one you've selected is dark. Oops. Notice how that, that is filled in, but this one is white. So that means I've selected it. Now, hold down your Alt key and drag out and your Bezier handles will appear. And we can do the same for this point. So select the point first, then hold down the Alt key and drag your Bezier handles out. Now, another way of doing that, if that's not working for you, is to use that tool we used in the previous exercise called the Convert Anchor Point Tool, which is under our pen tool. And you can click and drag. You don't have to hit any shortcut key. Click and drag and those Bezier handles will appear. And from there, you can go back to your sub selection tool, select an anchor point, and move it. And then these Bezier handles, you can uh, grab them individually. So I just want to move this in like this a bit and kind of smooth this out. We want this to be really smooth. Okay, so once you get your path nice and smooth looking, switch back to your selection tool, select the path. Um, you want to highlight the whole path. So the best way to do that is to click once on your layer name. That will select the whole path. Then choose Edit, Cut, which will um, uh, uh, basically uh, copy and cut off your stage. Now we're going to turn that into a motion path. All right, so let's bring in our airplane. So drag your airplane uh, off stage to the left. Now for this to be animated, it needs to be converted into a movie clip symbol. So right click on the airplane and choose convert to symbol and we'll call it uh, airplane. And hit OK. Now right click on the airplane and choose create motion tween. And now without deselecting anything choose edit paste in center. Now your airplane might disappear a little bit so what we need to do is select the motion path and move it up. Now, one thing you may have noticed, now I, I just moved my playhead back to, to uh, zero or one. One thing you may notice is that our airplane is starting, starting up high and ending down low. We want it starting down low and ending up here. So we can right click on the motion path, go to motion path and reverse path. And that will reverse how this is, how the airplane is going. Now all we need to do now is orient this uh, airplane to path. So select 
the motion path, open up the properties panel and turn on orient to path. And there's our airplane flying up and over. You can turn on your background again. And we can test this movie. Okay, so we're going to use a similar method for our bus. So you can lock the airplane layer now, and we're going to bring our bus in. And it too is going to be just below the bridge layer. So select your airplane layer and click the new layer button, and we'll call it bus. Now let's draw the path first. So to help with this, what I might do is turn the background off again. And we want our bus starting uh, on the left here and going off screen to the right. But notice how our bridge has a bit of a curve. So we're going to draw a line and then just um, uh, curve, curve the line a little bit. So let's turn on our pen tool. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw the line underneath the bridge first and then I'll move it into place when I'm done. So I'm going to have a start point here and then an end point off screen over here. And you can curve it but with your selection tool if you like. You can turn on your selection tool, float over the line and curve it so it matches the curve of our bridge. It's a very subtle curve. Okay. So now we want to, um, we don't have to worry about moving it into place quite yet. So let's select that line. I'm going to select it by clicking once on the layer name. And then I'm going to choose Edit, Cut. Now I'm going to move my playhead back to zero or frame one. And from my library, I'm going to bring in the bus ping and place it around here. Let's not worry about its size quite yet. We're going to adjust that shortly. So first we need to, to create any tween. Our uh, object needs to be converted into a um, symbol. So let's right click on the bus and choose convert to symbol or you can hit F8. And I'm going to give it a name of bus. Hit OK. Now right click on the bus and choose Convert, uh, create motion tween. And with it still selected, go to edit, paste in center. And there's our bus moving along the path. Now, all we need to do is we we may need to adjust a few things like the bus isn't quite on the path on the bridge here it's a little off so to do to fix that i'm going to select the motion path that you by clicking it once then i'm going to move it up so the bus is more on the bridge okay that's look that looks good so the next thing we need to do is the, the bus is way too big here. We want to create the illusion of it coming across the bridge and coming kind of towards us. So I need the bus to be smaller at the beginning and larger at the end. So let's uh, move the playhead back to one. Select the bus on the stage. Turn on your free transform tool. Hold down the shift key on your keyboard and we're going to shrink it down. Now our bus is now currently off, off the bridge, but it is smaller. So I'm going to turn on my selection tool. And I'm just going to click and drag that 
first anchor point of our uh, motion path and drag it down so the bus kind of starts around here. And now when you move your playhead, your bus um, it does not get larger, but we need it uh, larger at the end. So move your playhead to the end, select the bus, turn on your free transform tool, and we'll make it larger at the end. So it should look something like this. Maybe it needs to be larger. And we may need to rotate it a little bit. Now you can orient it to path as well. Now you can also um, edit the path so it's perfect. You can switch over to your selection tool, float over the path, and maybe bend it a little bit more so the bus remains on the bridge. So it's up to you. Take a bit of time to fine tune it. Now I'm going to turn on my background visibility. Let's test this out, see how it looks. Okay, so one thing I can do to give this a sense of some dynamics, I don't want our bus to appear right away. But right now it does. It starts right at frame one. I want the bus to come in when the airplane maybe is around here at frame 70. So we can shorten this tween. When you click, when you float over Let's look at the bus layer here. When you float over the left side of this tween you, and see the double-ended arrow, you can click and drag it and change its starting point. So I want to click and drag the starting point to be frame 70. Let's see what that looks like. So we've got our airplane coming in, flying up, then our bus appears and drives over the bridge. So with a motion tween, with a classic motion tween, that would be a little harder to do. Uh, but with a motion tween, it's very easy. You just need to float over the edge till you see that double-ended arrow, and then you just drag it where you need to. All right, now the final touch to this is we're going to add in some sounds. So let's go File, Import, Import to Library, and let's navigate to the Audio folder, and let's bring in all of our audio. Now to keep things nice and neat here, I'm going to create a folder called Audio within my library and drag all my audio in there. Now what we have here is we have two choices of songs. There's this one or this one. Uh, and choose between the two, okay? So I am going to choose, I think, the City N1 MP3 as my background sound. So uh, the way we add sound to uh, our animation is on its own layer. So let's create a new layer. We'll call it audio. And with your playhead at frame one, drag an instance of city N2 or your uh, arcade N, whatever you like, to the stage. And when you drop it there, you'll see it on your timeline here as a waveform. 
And we can place more than one piece of audio on this layer. Um, actually, to, to be safe, we'll put the audio on their own layers, but you can add more than one piece of audio to a layer. I'm going to just rename this audio layer. Let's call it uh, audio background. And we'll create another new layer called audio uh, SFX, sound effects. Move your playhead back to frame one. And let's drop the airplane sound effect at the beginning. So it happens that we hear the airplane. Then we've got a, a bus honking. So remember, our bus doesn't appear until frame 70. Let's add the sound effect at when it kind of comes in view, like right around here at frame 90. So within the audio SFX layer, right click on frame 90 and choose insert blank keyframe. And with your playhead still sitting there, drag uh, horn honk to the stage. And that will place the audio in that keyframe. Now let's see how all that turned out. My audio is not going to work here. Let's flip over to Chrome. There we go. Okay, that's looking really good. Now, uh, uh, one more... Uh, final step. We want to uh, make this web page responsive. We want it to expand the whole width of the um, of our browser. So to do that, we're going to go to File, Publish Settings, and here we get some check boxes here. Center stage, make responsive. So we do want it center. So click on center stage both. And we want it responsive, say responsive, both, and scale to fill visible area, fit in view. So that will scale it all within our browser window view. Now let's see what that looks like. Let's hit OK, and then hit uh, Control Enter to publish it and see what that looks like. So now it is responsive. It fits within view, no matter what our browser size is. And you may want to experiment with the other settings, because maybe you want it filling this whole space, which should be Make responsive, we are making response, scale to fit. We can make responsive both. Actually, I think if we turn off scale to fit and hit OK, let's see what that gives us. No, that did not give us what we need. There we go. So stretch to fit fills the whole space, but we get things cut off. So we don't, we may not want that. So I'm just going to go back to fit in view. Okay, so uh, again, let me know if you have any problems through email. And this again is very good practice for your ICA and good luck on your ICA.